Another character we're going to draw from Peter and the Wolf is the bird. <clears throat> in the in the musical composition, the bird is portrayed by the flute. So we're going to be drawing a bird that looks something like this. To draw that, I have my paper Tallways, portrait style, with my number two pencil as always, and keeping my lines very soft by keeping my hand gentle as I'm drawing. I'm going to start by placing a large circle towards the middle of the page. Now I don't want to make it too too big because I do need to leave room for the body of the bird but I don't want to make it too small. It's about the size of one of my fingers. So I'm going to start by pressing very softly, finding the shape, and then I can darken it in a little bit. I will be erasing some parts so I don't want to make it too dark. Once I've got that shape, I can add the shape of the body. To make that shape, I'm going to draw an oval under overlapping the circle. You see a lar large oval? <clears throat> Similar in size, a little bit smaller than the circle. And then once I have that, I can erase the top of the oval because I don't need that anymore. I drew the whole shape because it's easier to make that movement than to just make a curve underneath but I don't need to keep the entire shape. Once I've got that, I'm ready to start moving on to the parts of the head, and then I'll get to the body after. So I'll begin by drawing a curve right in the middle, upside down. That's gonna be for the top of the bird's beak. And from the that curve, I'm gonna draw a V shape underneath. So it's like an upside down U with a V underneath. I can put two little marks near the top of that. Almost looks like an ice cream cone in there. And that's going to be the bird's beak. Underneath that, I'm going to add one more U shape that starts right below the nostrils. It's a very deep U. Comes down and under on both sides. So that's the bottom part of the beak. Starts in the corner, comes right underneath, and come back, comes back up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this is right in the middle, so that gives me an, a nice way to keep everything balanced. So I'm going to draw the eyes next by finding the top of the beak, coming a little bit to the right, and drawing a gentle curve for the cheek, the top of the cheek. I'm going to do that on both sides. On top of that curve, I'm going to draw a nice big oval shape for my eye. And then inside that, I'm going to draw another oval on the inside corner for the bird's pupils. If you want, you can even put another oval inside of that, and that'll give you a little bit more detail. Try and get the eyes so they're an equal distance away from the beak. I'm going to put a little curve on the outside of each eye near the <clears throat> edge of the head, leaving a little gap in between. And then this is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to start on the side of the beak and I'm going to draw all, all the way around connecting to that curve. So this is a little bit of coloration on my bird going from the beak around the eye to that little curve I drew on the side. That little curve on the side I can bring out and give a couple of zigs before bringing it into the rest of the cheek. That is to show some feathers on the bird's cheeks. I'll add a little triangle shape inside each eye area for the eyebrow. And then on the top I'm going to bring three big zigs for a tuft of feathers on the top of the bird's head. I can then erase that little piece of the head that's in between those areas so everything kind of gets connected. All right? I use shapes to put everything together and then I erase the parts I don't need anymore. Moving down towards the belly, I'm going to find underneath the eyes I'm going to gentle curve down towards the bottom and then another one across on the other side. 
on either shoulder I'll just draw a couple of zigs coming across and that's just to show some feathers of the bird and his wings are tucked into his body so I won't see the entire wing coming out. Moving towards the bottom I'm going to start on the left side and draw a bit of a bumpy line. Not too many bumps. You see it's just a couple of little bumps, maybe a, a change. And this is going to be for the branch that the bird is resting upon. So I don't want to make it too, too bumpy. That wouldn't look normal. You see it's just kind of a gently bumpy line. Now on either side of that branch, right where the wing comes down towards the body, I'm going to draw a curve out away from the body. I'm going to repeat that two more times. So I've got three curves on the branch. I'll add a little bump underneath each curve and repeat that on the other side. One, two, three. These are for the bird's toes. If you want, you can add some lines onto those toes. You often see that in a lot of cartoons. Adds a little texture. <laughs> Last step I'm going to do today is giving the bird a tail. I'm going to follow underneath the body and right in the middle. I'm going to draw a little smooth triangle with curved sides. I don't want it to be too pointy. I want it to have the gentle curves to the side. On the top of that triangle, I'm going to add three or four bumps for the feathers. And then from each of those bumps, I'm going to bring a line straight down to the tip of that tail. That adds some of the tail feathers hanging behind the branch. When I put it all together with my Sharpie, it will look very nice. Um, and then I can start to add in some color with my colored pencils. Here you can say I use some different blues to add some nice texture, a tan color in the belly of the bird. And like every time I do it, it looks a little bit different. But it makes it unique. Good luck. <laughs> 